Hey dude, let's talk about RC circuits, specifically filter circuits, and maybe more specifically filter circuits for your assignment. But really what we're doing here is we're kind of unpacking how to calculate all different kinds of things to do with RC circuits. So in your assignment, I gave you a circuit and I gave you a resistance. I did not give you a capacitor. Oh, I guess you gotta figure what the capacitor is. What else did I give you? Well, I give you the corner frequency. So if we actually take a look over here, we have our corner frequency. We look at our Bode plot. We can see that for a low pass filter, the Bode plot's gonna look like this. And we know that our corner frequency is at 0 0.707. When our gain is at 0 0.707, we go over here and we go down and that's gonna be our corner frequency. Now, the corner frequency for this circuit, specifically this one, is 228 hertz. The ones that I've given your assignment are a little different and so are the resistors. You have to calculate the capacitor, but let's just go through the process so you kind of see how it's done. So what I need right now is I need to calculate my capacitance. So how do I do that? Is there a formula that has capacitance in it? Or at least an unknown that is capacitance and a resistance and a corner frequency? Yeah, it's the corner frequency formula. So, we know the corner frequency formula is this. Well, I'm going to put an equal sign in there. Equals 2 pi, and then I got my two elements here, which is my RFC. Whoa, whoa, my RC. Pardon me. So, from there, I can isolate for C because I have that and I have that. So, I can say C equals 1 over 2 pi R F C. So, this is now going to give my capacitance. Now, I've already calculated this for this value and for that value, and I came out with 1, no, I didn't, <laughs> I forgot, now I got it, 470 nanofarads, that's what I calculated. So. If you put a 470 nanofarad in this circuit, your corner frequency would be 228 hertz. The math says so. Now what we need to do is we need to do more. We need, we need to do an impedance triangle and we have to calculate our gain. So, to do our impedance triangle, we have to know reactance. And as soon as we get reactance, it opens up a really a whole bunch of cool stuff that we'll notice. So I'm going to calculate the reactance. We know the formula for that is pretty simple. It's 2 pi FC, but in this case, I'm going to put my corner frequency in there because I want to know what reactants specifically this is going to have so that my gain is going to be 0 0.707. Now, when I calculate this, you know what? I don't even need to calculate it because I know at the corner frequency, the reactance is actually going to be equal to the resistance. Yeah, it's true. So I just write this down, 1,200 ohms. I want to unpack that with you. There's so many cool things in this circuit. I want to unpack that with you in another video where we'll actually fool around with why this resistance and this resistance do what they do. But for now, let's just continue and focus on what the assignment requires you to do. So we know that my XC is 1,200, and I know my capacitance. So now I can go ahead and calculate my Z. So I know that Z is going to equal my R squared plus XC squared. And I've calculated this at 1, was it 6, 9, something? I did an Excel sheet to calculate all of these things so I could have and I fool around with numbers. So I had some numbers that actually worked out nice and easy. So my total resistance for my low pass filter. Sorry, I used the word resistance. Impedance is 1697. 1697 ohms. So now I have those two values. What I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to draw my impedance triangle. Well, we know that for the impedance triangle, we have our resistance that goes this way, and then we've got our reactance that goes this way, and then we can calculate our impedance here. This is going to be my reactance, and that's my, sorry, that's my resistance, reactance, and impedance. In this particular case, <coughs> pardon me, when we're at the corner frequency, and we've designed the 
reactants here, or specifically the capacitance that gives us the right reactance, and we're we're the this this circuit is functioning at the corner frequency, then actually we have this. Yeah, we do. That is the same length as that because we know that's 1200, that's 1200, and that actually be 45 and 45, and my Z is going to be this number here. Let me write it down. One, six, seven, whoa, whoa, nine, seven. I can't read my writing. Nine, seven ohms. Now, just let's just take a look at this. If this was 1200 and that ohms, and that was 1200 ohms, does that triangle look right? Yeah, so if your triangle doesn't look right, in that if that's 1200 and that's 2400 and you draw it this long, then there's something funky going on. And really, if you've calculated this reactance and it's any different from that, you've got to step back and then recalculate your capacitance. So these are things you could look for. So what we're going to do now is we're going to calculate gain. So let's take a look at gain. I don't need these guys. So my gain, as we know, I'm just going to do this guy over here, put him on his own on his own. We want to calculate gain at the corner frequency, which actually should be 0.707. So my gain at my corner frequency, my A, is going to be, now, let's talk about the voltage divider before I go into this gain thing. Really, the gain and the voltage divider are really linked. Let's just say that was a resistor and that was a resistor. And I wanted to know the voltage out here. I would need that ratio. I would need how much of this resistor, how much of the ratio of the total resistance is this resistor. And then that would actually give me a ratio that I could multiply by the voltage and it would give me the voltage out here. But in this case, it's not going to be 0.5. Let me tell you about the 0.5. If that was a resistor at 1200 and that was a resistor at 1200, then the output is going to be half of this because 1200 over 2400 is 0.5 but we have 20 we have 1200 here and we have 1200 here so why is it that when i calculate my gain it's 0.7 or 07 the reason for that is because this is not resistance it's frequency dependent resistance and this total resistance here is not total resistance it's impedance So really, what we need to do is, we can, let me just stop here. We can do Ohm's Law, Kirchhoff's Law, voltage dividers, the whole bit. We can do all of that stuff in RC circuits as long as we use this and this. And it all works out. So we're going to do that here. I know that my gain is going to be my Z, which is the total resistance in this circuit which is called impedance so the total impedance and then this guy is my XC my reactance over my impedance you know what I'm just gonna write this a little bit differently just so we kinda go back to this formula so we can almost see things here if that value is the same as that value is the same as that value then actually we have a right angle triangle with 45 and 45 and you know that if you wanted to calculate this it's actually the root of 2. So what is 1 over the root of 2? Oh yeah, 0 0.707. And that's actually where this whole thing comes in from. But essentially when we put these numbers in after we've calculated everything this is going to be 0 0.707. Absolutely. So. What we've done here is we've calculated the gain at the corner frequency, which we've expected to be 0.707, and we chose the right capacitor to actually make all of that happen, and then from there we calculated the reactance and the impedance and put it in our formula. The other thing that you have to do, well, that's the first thing you have to do, is calculate this. Now, the other two gains you have to calculate are the gain at 10% of this, 0.1 of this, or particularly point one of this frequency so you I'm gonna go down here all right what you have to do is you have to calculate the gain this guy here you have to calculate this at 0.1 percent of the frequency and then you have to calculate the gain at 10 times the frequency and you will see that this gain over here 
point 0.1 of this frequency is going to be really high. It's going to like be 0.99. I can see that from my graph. So over here, when you go 10 times this frequency, you're going to go way down there, and your gain is going to be really like maybe 0.1, really small. So expect to see those numbers. So that is a low-pass circuit, low-pass filter circuit. So now let's step into the high-pass filter circuit and look at that. Okay, let's look at the high-pass band. And as we know, a high-pass has got the capacitor up there because it's higher. That's how I remember. So we're going to study this same. We're just going to go through the same process. We're going to calculate our C and then our XC and then from there our gain. So same process. What we want to do is we want to find this guy. So my C is going to be 1 over the variables that I do have. So two, let me write a more better 2. 2 pi. And in this case, I'm going to write my F and my R. Now that is the corner frequency. So from there, I'm going to calculate that. And I've already calculated this. actually 1 microfarad. So for this particular circuit, if I had a high pass filter and I had my corner frequency at 4500 I, I had a resistor of 33 and I would need a capacitor of one microfarad to make it all work properly so from here we have to find the capacitance of this I was gonna say resistor capacitor at this particular frequency and that's gonna be this my XC equals 1 over 2 pi FC F C, and in this case, my C is going to be, my frequency is going to be the corner frequency. Okay, so I have gone ahead and calculated this as well, although just like we said in the last video, I don't need to calculate it because I know I'm dealing with my corner frequency, so I know it's going to be equal to the value of the resistor. So 33 ohms. If you do your math and you don't get 33 ohms, go back. There's something funky going on. So from here, I can do my Z. My Z equals my R squared plus my XC squared. And in this case, the Z is, which I have to look up again. These spreadsheets are awesome. High pass filter Z is 46. This makes sense, 46 ohms. And I like that because I know when I'm at my corner frequency, my impedance triangle is going to look like this. That's going to be the same length as that. That's going to be my Z, my, I almost wrote XC there, R and XC. And this guy is going to be 33 ohms. This guy is going to be 33 ohms. And it looks right. 46, 46 ohms. Yeah, that looks about right. So. What now I do here is I've got to get my gain. Now, this is where it changes a little bit. Remember, just we're looking at this as a voltage divider, or specifically what we would do to find the ratio that we would use in our voltage divider, the ratio of not the resistances, but all of the resistive nature, which is the impedance and the resistance and the reactance. So in this case, again, we're dealing with impedance, which is the total resistance of current in this circuit. And we know that my gain is going to be Z, and then what am I going to put up here? Well, you don't have to even remember the formula. You're trying to find the output across this guy. You're trying to find essentially the volts drop across this. So what ratio would you use? Well, you would put R1 here. So that's the difference between a high pass and a low pass. In a high pass, right, we're finding the voltage drop across this. In a low pass, we're finding the voltage drop across that. So we put XC up here, but in this case, it's R. So I'm not, I don't even have to put, well, you should put the math in and show that you've calculated it. But I know that it's going to be 0 0.707 because all of the other things worked out. So this is going to be 0 0.707. Now, just like the low pass, you're going to have to actually calculate 10% of this frequency. So that'll be down here somewhere. At 10% of this frequency, you know that that value is going to be really low. You're going to get a gain of like 0.1 or really low, probably lower. I don't know what you'll get. But 
Over here, you're going to go 10 times this. So you're going to be like way down there, even off the screen, you're going to be way down there. And the gain over there is going to be 0 0.99 something. It's going to be really high. So I think you're good for this assignment. You know everything you need to know. I'll do another video about all of the really cool, funky stuff behind the scenes and why all of these numbers work out and what 0.707 has to do with anything. Okay, bye.